So we've seen how to calculate the resultant forces when two forces are parallel to each other, so one forward, one backwards, or uh, one up and one down. But how do we calculate the resultant force when you've got two forces that are at right angles to each other, or at some other angle to each other? Um, well, in this case, I've got, I'll have got. i just show you the process before I show you it, it with a scale diagram. Um, so have a look at these two forces. They're at right angles to each other. How do we find the resultant force? Well, you can probably tell what direction it's going to go in. It's probably it's going to go in that sort of direction, right? Well, let's let's have a look at him and see how we can calculate it exactly. So all you need to do in this case is move one of the two forces so that they are top and tail. Let me show you what I mean by that. Currently, they are tail to tail, right? So the two forces are tail to tail but we want them top and tail. So let's move, I'm gonna move this one on the right here and I'm gonna put it so that it's now top and tail, yeah? Like that. If I wanted to, I could move the bottom arrow and I could move it up the top here so that it's top and tail with the top arrow, okay? And you can probably see then, well, where do you think we're gonna draw the resultant force arrow? Well, we're gonna start at the bottom here and we're going to draw it up here. Okay, so there's my resultant force arrow. If I had a protractor, I could measure the, the direction of the force. Um, and if I had a ruler, I could measure the length of the arrow. And if it was a scale diagram, I could use the scale factor to figure out the, figure out the resultant force. What about in this case then, when I've got the same situation? I've got, this time I've got, uh, this time I've got a force at, a, at some angle that isn't 90 degrees. Well, it's the same situation, I've just got to move it so that it's top to tail. Um, I'm going to move the one on the left so that it's top and tail with this one. Okay. Or, if I wanted to, I could move the top one so that it's top and tail with the bottom one. And I've constructed what you might call a parallelogram of forces. Um, and then I can just draw the resultant force like so. Okay. Um, again, if I had a ruler, I could measure the length of it. And if I had a Tractor, I could measure the bearing from north uh, to get a direction. Well, let's have a look at this. Um, let's have a look at this for a, a question. And I'm going to try and draw this to scale as well. So a swimmer is crossing a river. If she's producing a driving force of six newtons north and the water produces a force of three newtons east, find the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. So firstly, well, we're going to draw it as a, I'm going to draw. I'm going to draw the free body diagram for this situation and I'm going to do it to scale. Now these are one centimeter squares. Um, so six newtons north. Let's start with six newtons north. Now each square is one centimeter. So I'm going to say my scale factor could be one centimeter uh, per newton. Yeah. So six newtons north then. So let's have a look. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. And what's the other one? So three newtons east. So three newtons east. One, two, three. There's my free body diagram. There's my diagram of the two forces acting on the swimmer. Now, how do we calculate the resultant? Well, we could move the left arrow so that it's top and tail. Currently, they're tail to tail. We want them top and tail. So I'm going to move the one on the left here. Okay. And then I can draw the resultant force. Alternatively, I could just see... I can just show you that if I move the bottom arrow to the tip of this arrow here, I get this, yeah? And then my resultant force then is an arrow with that long. That, that's the length of the arrow. If I wanted to calculate the exact size of it, I would use this ruler. Uh, let's have a look. And there we go. Right, so it looks as though it's about somewhere it's like 6.9 by the looks of it so that's 6.9 our scale factor is one centimeter per newton so that's 6.9 newtons okay so 6.9 newtons now let's measure it with the let's use the protractor to see what the direction is stick it there okay um it looks as though it's about 30 sorry 27 degrees so that's a bearing of 0 to 7 degrees. Okay, so there we go. All I've done is I've just drawn two forces. I've drawn a 3-newton arrow 
down here. I've drawn the six newton arrow here, and then I've just moved the arrow to the top and tail, and I've produced well a square of forces. And then I can use the, I can just just find the resultant force from here to here to get that. Okay, right, now let's try some more complicated situations. Determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant force for each case. So let's use this, let's start with this boat here. So I've got a boat that's going 50 newtons upstream or wherever, and I've got a 70 newton force acting that way. So what am I going to do? Firstly, I'm going to see what the scale factor is. So if that arrow is 70 newtons, I can move my ruler move my ruler and I can see that that arrow is about seven centimeters long therefore our scale factor is um, is one centimeter you can probably see that it's one centimeter uh, is, is equal to 10 newtons in this case yeah so I'm gonna draw I'm gonna move that arrow so that it's top and tail with the 50 newton arrow okay so let me move my ruler so that I can draw it seven centimeters long at the tip here Let's draw it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, there we go. Bit of a wonky arrow, but it will do. Um, likewise, you can probably see that, well, you can see that I could, if I wanted to move the 50 newton arrow here, I could alternatively move the 50 newton arrow here. There we go. And I end up with another parallelogram of forces where this, let me draw that again, where that is my resultant force yeah because it always goes from where the two forces meet the tail to tail bit to the tip to, and tip bit of the two forces there so you can see then that i've constructed a parallelogram of forces and the red line indicates the magnitude so let me just measure that with the ruler there we go it works out to be about that looks like 11 ish maybe 11.1 Okay, so 11.1, .1, that's 111 centimeters, 111 newtons for our scale factor. Okay, so 111 newtons. Now let me use the protractor to measure the angle. Okay, so that looks like about 19 degrees then. So 0, um, yeah, 0, 1, 9 degrees bearing okay so there's my resultant force there let's do the same for this case this time I haven't got like a nice picture to go with it it's just a free body diagram on its own so let's let's use the ruler to measure the scale factor okay you can see the scale factor then so that's about six and a half centimeters so 6.5 centimeters is 650 newtons therefore we can you can probably tell that each newton each centimeter uh, is equivalent to 100 newtons there's our scale factor Right, so let's move, let's move this arrow here. Let's draw another six centimeter arrow, uh, so six and a half centimeter arrow, so that it's tip to tail with this arrow here. Okay, so I'm going to just draw it. There we go. Alternatively, you can see that I could move the other arrow, the 350 newton arrow. I could move that down here if I wanted to, and I get a parallelogram of forces with the resultant force. I'll do that again. Resultant force here. There we go. Right, I'll use the measure. I'll use the ruler to measure it. That looks like 8.1 or 8.2 to me. 8.2. Let's say 8.2. So 820 uh, newtons. Yeah, because of the scale factor here. Right, the direction then. Now remember, guys, it's the direction from the north. Okay. So I will move my ruler out of the way. Direction from the north. I draw my north line there and I'll move my protractor over right you can see that it's about a hundred and hundred and fifty seven degrees one five seven so one five seven degrees okay right again hopefully there will be uh, hopefully there will be some questions by the time you watch this video in the description have a go at those. I'll put some answers in there as well. Uh, best of luck and I'll see you in the next video.